Колеги, продовжуємо робочий день. Зараз будемо говорити на тему легалізації добровольчих батальйонів. Я до слова запрошую. Bogdan Chervak, chairman of the organization of Ukrainian nationalists, will be the moderator. Uh, dear journalists, I'll be talking a, not a lot. More will be said by people who take part in combat in Donbass. But uh, I'll tell you about the aim of our press conference. The commander of the own battalion, Mykola Kochanivsky, will soon go to his fighters in the village of Piski. Apart from the own battalion, there's also the right sector Ukrainian Volunteer Corps in uh, Piski, and they will meet their rank-and-file soldiers, and they will be asked about what they have to provide answer to. The key question is now the question of the status. More or less, the volunteer battalions have put their status to order. Some of them belong to the Ministry of Defense, some to National Guards. But uh, there is the issue of the own battalion and the right sector Ukrainian Volunteer Corps, whose legal status is still undefined. So I give the floor to commander of the own battalion, friend Mykola Kochanivsky. Glory to Ukraine. Well, friends, the issue of our legalization in the structure of the Ministry of Defense, and we do want to become legalized within this structure, has been raised for long. I'm uh, going to talk about my battalion. I started my attempts to legalize the battalion in uh, April last year, and maybe there is no such an office that I would not enter with such a uh, request, and there are no, and no, not an office that I wouldn't have uh, written a letter to about the legalization of our battalion within the structure of the Minister of Defense, and the last uh, arrangement was with the Brigade 93 that they will create a special company and we will be enlisted there. Why we need this? Of course, we would like our guys to be protected after the war. Of course, we would like them to get the status of the anti-terrorist operation fighters, but the main thing is that we need arms. We have more men than we can arm, and uh, it happens so from time to time that we lack fighters on the front line, and we cannot send them there. We cannot put a person without a submachine gun in a trench, although before there were such cases, but now when the combat became more severe, we cannot do this. We need artillery, we need mortars, and Brigade 93 promised us this, but they did not show us the mechanism. My ambition is simple. I remain the, com the commander of the unit that will be created. My sub-commanders become commanders of uh, subunits, and uh, those riflemen who agree to serve as contract soldiers serve with us. But still, there is no mechanism who will issue the orders so that I, for instance, become a, a sub-lieutenant to command this company, and who will issue the order to form a company? Who will issue this order so that I had the company or the battalion that already exists? I don't see this. I don't see this at any stage. 
and I've been going to different offices for half a year or more and they of course smile at me but they lie to me saying that this is not a problem at all now they have uh, shown uh, said that there's some way but i don't see the mechanism how volunteers can be legalized within the armed forces of ukraine and correspondingly we cannot fight to the full because we don't have enough arms yes we have some arms that we've taken from the enemy some we bought at our own money <coughs> but still quite a number of ukraine want to fight within our volunteer battalions i don't want to diminish the significance of our armed forces or minister of interior but we have a queue of people who want to fight within our ranks but we cannot enlist them because we don't have enough arms tomorrow i will probably talk again to the uh, armed forces ministry of defense but there's no guarantee that they will solve the issue i don't know whether they will appoint me or my subcommanders to our next positions maybe they're saying uh, sign the contracts then go to back to your homes then go to military commissariats and uh, come again as a company this is of course insanity so we do not hide uh, make secret of how we want to fight and if we of course there is some subordination and the line of command there's an order and we are ready to be subordinated to someone we are not being issued orders we are being given requests we are being asked to go there do this but there was not a single uh, order that we haven't performed for instance the only order that we did not fulfill well, was when we were supposed to go to the airport through the ranks and check up of the separatist unit. When we were said to go and storm the village of Mohila, one of the units went to APCs at once and went there. But I'm telling you this. We understand what regular troops are. We understand what the order is. We understand what the line of command is. We ask not for a lot. We want to stay together. I, as a commander, have the ambition to remain a commander of the unit that we have created and to wage the war further. Glory to Ukraine. Bicja dobrowolczy ukraińskiego korpusu prawo sektora drugiego panasa. Dobrego dnia. Mnie już przedstawił. Ja jestem komandorem rejdowej grupy prawo sektoru. Chcę także wam przedstawić i mogę pobratyma ta druga. I would like also to introduce my friend Nightingale Salavi. I support my commander who says we request for the arms in this tough times because uh, uh, there, are, there are no long queues uh, to the m military commissions. Uh, and uh, for example, in my district, there were up to 200 hundred candidates to be enlisted to the army. And out of the 200 people on the 12, people could be enrolled to the army. And uh, uh, against this background, we are real volunteers. We have more than 200 people uh, volunteering to, to fight. And uh, for me, it uh, uh, looks totally ununderstandable and uh, to some extent criminal. And uh, uh, I should confess that as of today, we only have the arms which were conquered from our enemies, and uh, uh, we have uh, uh, a lot of artillery units in the 
stock? Uh, why it is not on the front line? Why it is not in combat? Mm, uh, and uh, my question is, uh, how many volunteers do we have? Uh, how many uh, those Maidan participants we have alive. So the, the government has to value those people. And actually, they are now creating a situation when we will be forced to take arms and to protect our cities ourselves. And we obviously see this case in Mariupol now. I think that uh, our commander should st should change this approach, should stop. That's why we have to awake the, the government, and uh, um, we are eager to assist our country um, in this difficult situation. And my friend probably will add something. Good morning. I am Druk Solovey from Panas Company. As for mobilization, everybody probably knows that the most motivated warriors are volunteers, and uh, oh, we are very much eager to uh, suppress our enemies. Uh, this is the war, I will call it how it is. And uh, uh, from the late summer events, you remember, mm, the situation when uh, uh, at the beginning of very important operations, um, some uh, units, some army units uh, said, uh, uh, we won't go there. It's that dangerous while we always went in the most dangerous places. Um, as of today, uh, we have only uh, three units of artillery for the uh, 25, uh, per 25 people. And uh, uh, nevertheless, although it is next to impossible, but we managed to uh, uh, oppress the enemies, even in Pisky. Next, Russia should be recognized as an aggressor. We are not, uh, uh, we, are, we are fighting not with the mercenaries. We are fighting with the Russian regular troops. Uh, yesterday, as far as I know, the sanctions were applied. It's too late. The sanctions had to be uh, imposed long ago when Europe started to do this. Uh, uh, also, uh, we should become the hosts in our own home. We, shall, uh, we should stop begging for something. We should understand that Europe won't fight for us. We have to fight ourselves. Uh, uh, and actually, uh, uh, now we are like an exchange coin for the countries. We should take our uh, heavy military equipment, which is stocked in the military warehouses. And uh, I know many cases when um, heavy military equipment is uh, sold not just delivered to the army, but sold. Any questions, colleagues? Uh, could you please tell us, uh, as a commander of the own battalion and representatives of the right sector, uh, whom are you now subordinated to? It's not just you go to assault on yourself. Well, we are subordinated we fight together with uh, Brigade 93. We consider them our commanders, and if they ask us to do something, we do this. But officially, we're not subordinated to anyone. I, as a commander of the battalion, 
and not subordinated to anyone. And I think that the right sector as well. For you to understand what the situation is when you don't have artillery. For instance, there's the so-called ceasefire, and they are shelling us, and the only protection are the three cannons that the right sector has. I would like to add, probably this is uh, for the better that we are not subordinated to the armed forces or the Minister of Interior at the moment. Maybe this will be good in the future because the previous months of the war have proven that as soon as we start to plan the operation with the commanders from the anti-terrorist operation headquarters, the operation is a flop. When, do it, when we do it on ourselves, then we have success. As far as uh, acquiring legal status is, uh, Mr. Kochanovsky uh, tell, told us quite a lot, and uh, Mr. Yarosh as well has uh, conducted negotiations for a lot of, for quite a long time. But the generals and top officials whom he met have only issued a lot of promises, saying that, for instance, you will be subordinated to security service unit or to armed forces, but no one has. Uh, offered us a mechanism. There were cases when, for instance, they uh, reached agreement in the evening, but in the morning it was again void. Both the right sector and their own guys want to do this very much, but the impression is that it is uh, profitable for the state not to provide any legal status for our guys, but just to leave us without protection for long. How many other battalions have legal status now? As far as I understand, only their own battalion and the right sector don't have legal status. This is so. Yes, the ones that you have uh, named are subordinated to the police. We are not the police and we do not want to be the unit of uh, the Ministry of Interior because their ranks are inflated. But if you do not want to be subordinated to the Ministry of Interior, whom you want to join? The National Guards or the Armed Forces? The Armed Forces, we are more inclined about the Armed Forces because police uh, have to keep the order in peaceful towns and we are a bit different because we are a military unit and we do not want to become a structural part of uh, the police and uh, to promote the police state then. I think that police has enough people now or even more than enough. My question is to Mykola Kochanivsky. You said that you are now coordinating your actions with Brigade 93. But did you have talks about merging or joining the Brigade 93 with the commander of this brigade? At the very beginning, I told you that we had such talks, but at the moment, I already have an experience of talking to the military. It is very complicated. Today, they tell you, yes, yes, but tomorrow, the story is absolutely different. There is no mechanism. No one has shown me how I can become an officer of the armed forces and uh, had at least a company. They, all they say is go to the military commissariat, write an application for a short-term contract, and then we will include you into our ranks. But you know, almost everywhere in the armed forces, there's lies and lies. I would like to see an order about the creation of uh, our unit and my appointment as a commander. We are never refused at any level, but they have never done it the way we want it. No one has shown me a direct mechanism. There was a period when we wanted to 
get involved with the interior, Ministry of Interior, but there is a lot of protection there. Have you tried, or were you were scared by the process of transformation? Oh, no, we tried. I talked to Mr. Cherevan there. There's also Hiroshinko, whom I met. At first, we were promised a full-scale battalion, but uh, then they started to talk about a company at uh, the battalion. Then they said, join the Azov battalion. We agreed to do this, but then it again turned to nothing. How can I explain? It is very hard to explain some things. You're being ignored, although you're not being refused. Excuse me, I did several thoughts. We think that the situation can be changed, or at least half changed, when the commandment of commanders of the anti-terrorist operation uh, is changed. They allowed for the tragedy at Savur Mohila in Ilovaisk at the Donetsk airport and some situations which are not being talked at all. Because the situation in the airport was known several months ago, they haven't issued corresponding uh, orders, they haven't brought in arms. If they remain in their positions, we will get another airports and another Ilovaisks. Maybe every volunteer will say that we do not need the status, but this is needed by the families of those who died so that they can survive. And this is needed by the guys who are wounded so that they get some money for their medicines and so on. I, for instance, do not need the status of money or plot of land. I have my heads in my head. I can live in this country. There, there was an information that you are now establishing the reserve battalion of the right sector. Uh, could, could you develop more on this? Yes, we know about uh, formation of this battalion, but I won't speak much at this stage about this battalion. Uh, I can only inform you that it will be used to, to strengthen our battalion. Um, uh, uh, you know that uh, uh, our members uh, are representing different uh, regions of uh, uh, Ukraine. and. Uh, our motivation is to protect our own homes, but now we are protecting our own homes at the front line in the East. I believe that the uh, uh, most frightening enemy is not at the front line now. The biggest enemies are in Kiev in the administration, and there are many um, adversary groups uh, and uh, uh, many spies and, uh, and agents working here in the mainland Ukraine. And uh, uh, this was one of the considerations when we decided to form our reserved battalion. And uh, our uh, friends, after coming back from the front line, they will continue their work in their native cities. And one more question. No more questions? Ukraine form. Uh, are there any battalions which are already legalized and became part of the army forces? Uh, uh, as far as I know, uh, IDAR uh, was legalized, and this is the only one battalion which is uh, um, subordinated to the army forces now, but I have not understood the mechanism. Uh, Mm, as far as I know, there is Mr. Melnichuk who, um, uh, who implemented this um, procedure. Uh, I haven't understood how he did this, how he managed to do this. Uh, this is actually a top secret. 
and uh, I asked a lot of questions to the IDAR um, servicemen, and uh, um, nobody responded me. Uh, there are uh, 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 at the level of the rumors. Uh, um, I had uh, no meeting with Mr. Melnichuk, who is head of this uh, uh, battalion, and uh, I haven't heard his uh, version of the procedure. Uh, both commanders and uh, uh, regular servicemen uh, who are members of IDAR battalion, they uh, say that they are fighting on the same basis as, uh, as, as we are. Quite often, we ask our servicemen whether they um, met somebody, whether they uh, uh, tried to do something. But actually, it's not the task of our guys to do this, because their objective and their task is to fight. Uh, and uh, alongside with this fighting, they are actually forced to, to go around these bureaucrats. And uh, 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 we should uh, um, think how to support our volunteers properly. It's not our role. Thank you very much for, uh, for your presentation. I hope that we will find a way for the constructive dialogue. Our next uh, briefing will be in two minutes. Thank you.